Hello. For now, I am going to work on putting back the rims I took apart for that uh, forklift. Now, it's been a few days because uh, I had to sandblast, wire brush, do a lot of work. They're very rusty and uh, they just uh, needed to be cleaned up. And so here we have this one here. Here's the rim that requires a tube and it's two rings. And this is a tubeless and the two rings are over there for that one. Now, the main point of the paint was not to make it look pretty. This is just a, some of uh, the paint that they had for the Caterpillar. It looked similar to that of the forklift. So they painted it up. Basically, I just can't have this rusting out anymore because if those pieces lose any more metal, this uh, rim is basically be shot. Uh, I got a lot of pitting. So I'm gonna have to, uh, this one will be easy because we, this one uses an inner tube but uh, if the ring sections crowed too much these uh, rims fail so got it they got a paint a coat on it hopefully it'll make it last another 10 20 years but because i found out that i have a lot of the rims that are tubeless i didn't want to put a good tire on this one to put on the forklift i had brought two good tires over so I'm going to, the one old one that was flat was only flat because of the inner tube. So I'm going to use it as a spare, but put it on for now onto the one with the tube. So that one, that tire is pretty wore out, but it'll hold air with the inner tube and I can use that. And then the other tire, which is a, a better tire that I got, you know, not really the best. I mean, they're like five, 10 percent tread, but the, the rubber is much better rubber. Uh, that is going to go on the uh, tubeless. So I'm going to first put together the tube rim. And uh, i got to figure out exactly what all I have. One of the big things I'm going to use is this Murphy's uh, tire mounting compound. This stuff is absolutely a must for putting these together. I, 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 won't, even, I won't even work on the tires unless I have this stuff. It's super slick. And... Uh, uh, really makes it much easier for the tires. I don't have to fight the tires. Everything will seal up. And if you've got little bits of gaps, you just, you know, glob it on real thick around it and it'll actually hold a little bit of air pressure and get the tire to mount. So let's uh, get this tire on that rim and then put the inner tube and the tube protector on it. So. I'm uh, not sure. I think I uh, ought to put that stuff in first and then drop it down. Biggest issue is to get the valve stem through there. I might have to hook a wire on that valve stem so I can pull it through. So let me uh, get things set up. Let me get things set up and then I can uh, start recording again. Well, I've got the uh, inner tube in and the protection for the inner tube, which is a piece of rubber that's uh, like a half round that just fits inside all around here. And uh, when I do it, I don't know if there's any trick. I just sort of push it in. First, I push the inner tube in and then I air it up and try to move it around to get any wrinkles out of it. Then I let the air out. Then I put in the protection rubber right around here. And that's sort of hard to get it lined up. You don't you want them to line up straight so it's not uh, putting pressure on the valve stem. So what I did is put an O-ring and uh, hook the uh, uh, valve stem through this rubber right here from the inner tube, and that holds it in place. So when I started working the uh, the this uh, uh, piece of uh, protection rubber. It would everything would be lined up and then I just aired it up and now I'll probably let most of the air out I think I'll let leave a lid just a very little bit in enough to keep it so that the valve stem will be pushed out but I can't I have just a little too much in there at the moment because I need to make this so I can push this back and get it down onto the rim so I got that set up I'll let a little air out and then I've got this and uh, 
I'm just gonna make sure I get that valve stem to come down and go right into that. So let's slowly get this done. Well, I'm about ready to put the rim on. Let's try to see if I can get this so you can see it. Uh, it's hard. I'm gonna try to tweak the rim to get the valve stem in. Well, looking at it, looks like I'm gonna have to grab some wire. I can't see down the hole to line it up. So if I put some tie wire around it, maybe I can pull it up to the hole. So I've gotta go grab some of that. Well, I managed to get the valve stem up. I used some of this wire and I ran it through and wrapped it around it. And as I slide it down, I sort of pulled on it and it came off but it was just barely sticking out and I was able to use uh, my uh, uh, side cutters to just barely grab it and to pull it up. And it still wanted to drop down so I had to pull up enough and then I was able to get the, uh, the locking ring on it. So we've got all that set up. So I'm now gonna have to flip this over onto a block of wood to keep, uh, actually I don't really need, well, I'm gonna do that. Now that'll probably be good. It'll make it easier to put the uh, snap ring in. But then uh, I'll have to uh, uh, watch it as I slowly put air in it. Because on these split rings and stuff, uh, they can uh, be uh, pretty nasty if the snap ring comes off during the process with all the air pressure. So I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to have to get this block over here. Once I get it set down, then we'll get the uh, rings on. I use plenty of this uh, tire mounting compound. Don't skimp on it.
Well, this is my first time to actually put one of these uh, snap rings together. It tires up a little bit. It's a little hard to get that snap ring in place. I don't have any good bars with me. I'm going to go in the other room try to find some bars. Well, I was able to use this bar to hook it. And from there, I'm able to pound it all the way around and in. Now the ring has gotten in, but I noticed right here at the very beginning, it's a little bit... It's in, but not full as seated in as I would like. So, I'm just going to put a little bit of air in it, bring it up to see if I can force it back in. Well, I need a different tip because this won't fit. Well, I had another one which I uh, stash away in our pet wrecker. I uh, stash some stuff in there, otherwise it tends to disappear. Here, I don't want to put very much air pressure in this until I know it sits pro seats properly. I just need it to come up just enough to start catching. Slowly coming up. I think it's going to seat okay. Let's just get it fully seated now. I'm just waiting it to push this one ring right here up tight. And then I'm going to put a protection me measure what, uh, before I fill it up with a real air pressure just in case things don't seat and I don't need this ring to come shooting out like a bullet. Okay, the ring is now nice and tight right to the top. The the split ring is fully seated, and now I'm going to go grab some chains, and I always wrap a couple chains around to keep it, if it pops off, and it'll just be held by the chains. Okay, I've got uh, two chains. It's actually sort of nice to have four, uh, but the two will hold it. So, uh, four is either better. I do not expect this to fail. This is also uh, one big reason why if uh, these rings are rusted too bad that you have to then uh, get rid of the rim because if it has too much corrosion, it won't see. So that's one reason for completely cleaning it, checking it, and then painting it so it doesn't corrode anymore.
is. It is uh, very important that the uh, uh, the bead right here is firmly up against uh, this uh, inner split ring. So with it pressed up against, it becomes it squeezes that ring down into the groove, and the outer ring then forces it down so it cannot possibly come out. So I heard, I've heard lots of stories about the, you know, taking off people's arms and heads and killing people and exploding. I've even seen some videos. But if, as long as you take care, slowly take your time doing this, um, it's not really that bad. It's just when people get in a hurry or they're trying to put it in with dirty or rusty rings, that you can have a real issue. But you still, you know, may not be able to tell that there is something like critically wrong, but it does uh, seem to be uh, holding air pretty good. It is, uh, the bead has come all the way up. Get it, some wax around. If there's anything like in the way. Try to release some stress and keep airing it up slowly. I won't put a lot of air in it for at this moment. What I'll end up doing is just getting it up here so it holds on nice and tight. The ring's all in. And then I will install it on the forklift and then finish bringing it up to the proper uh, pressure. That's even a little bit safer because the split ring section on the forklift is facing inside. And so I will be filling it from the outside. Uh, it'll be, uh, well, a little bit better, but uh, it's possible that the, uh, well, no, it, it would be fine because the uh, rim would be bolted to the uh, the uh, forklift, so it would be fine that way. But it looks like I'm almost uh, just a little bit more, and then uh, this will be uh, done. Now, I was going to put together the tubeless tonight, but I forgot something. I forgot to get a valve stem. We have valve stem for the cars here, but I didn't see any for the truck. I will take one uh, quick look to see if I can find any, but other than that, this is going to be it for uh, for now. Uh, I will uh, probably make this uh, several different uh, uh, episodes on the single video with this. Then probably I'll then add on the uh, uh, tubeless and then mounting it up. And maybe some other things like finding some of the fittings for the fuel line. So... Well, that'll be enough for this, and uh, the next thing I'll be is to work on the tubeless as soon as I get the valve stem. It's a new day with a new tire and rim. Well, I got the valve stem today, got it in. So now we have everything to put this together. I'm the tool by the way. So I'm going to bring uh, that stuff over. Got to get this thing all uh, gooped up, and then uh, we'll start. this on this allows it to seal up much easier 
I don't know how many times I can keep saying that, but I can't stress it enough. I still know people that'll do it without and then just fight it and fight it and it won't seal up properly. I only want to do it once. I don't want to take it on and off. Especially around where, right where the bead is trying to seal, trying to put a lock. Somebody left the cap off of that bucket of tire mounting compound. It's gotten a little harder than normal, but it's a little more difficult to stick. Any place the tire might touch. Well, especially up where the O ring is, I just fill it all in. Tire compound hold can actually hold against air pressure. If you have like a big gap, I put this uh, material along with some rags around to get it to uh, seal enough to build air. Well, it should be good enough right there. A little bit off. Right on. Tire mounting compound on this. Both sides, this side will ride with the O ring. Side rides on the And yeah, it was a snap ring. Wipe my hand off. This is where it's hard since I don't have really the correct tools to do this. I'm just using a couple of these other tire bars.
So I'm gonna have to work this a little longer because I need to push this uh, uh, ring down before I can get that on. This might need the excavator to help me on this. It looks like I'm going to be fighting this. I think I'm going to start up the excavator. Let's get all ready for that. If I had all the uh, proper tire tools, I can do it. But since I don't, I'm going to have to use an extra arm. Yeah, got almost forgot to put the o-ring in ah. all right well I'm gonna have to put the camera down to get the uh, o-ring in there well got the o-ring in there just want to make sure that it stays inside the groove when this ring piece comes up I get this and I got this got the split ring ring in there and now I can relieve the pressure from my third arm this is sort of a cheat I just want to put enough uh, air in it to try to bring it up a little bit and then I will bring it inside put chains on it and put some more air in it so but I gotta I have a brand new cap is on it so, let's see if we got any leaking well I can hear a leak oh I can hear it's catching ah You can hear it popping a little bit coming up. <sighs> Grab the hammer and get some taps. Oh, tires come up more. Press a little better. We'll just 
put a little bit more and then we'll take it inside and air it up with the chains. Unfortunately, I seem to hear that we have a leak in this area right here. So we'll have to take it inside and find out why. Well, our little problem is that the uh, O-ring in this spot came up and uh, that's the issue. It came up out of its groove down in there. I've uh, letting the air out. I'm going to uh, see what I can do. I can't tell if it's back in there now or not. upside down well let's uh, find out so looking at it looks like I put the uh, snap ring in upside down so that kept this right in here Get this thing from doing I think this has got to be the opposite way around I'll find out here we'll flip it over and see how it fits well I knew something wasn't quite right and it's a good thing because I did put the ring upside down and uh, I got it fitted in a little bit better and I can tell that my just give it a some more wax on the side, try to see if it'll slide up on its own here. There it goes. Ah, that fits way better. The O-ring looks like it's still in its seat. I can check it with my screwdriver. Looks like that's good. So, put a little air in it and uh, see how it goes. It's very, one thing when you're working on these rims, never force anything. Something looks bad, just check it, start over if you have to. Don't force it. These things can be dangerous. There we go. We got much, yeah, it's sealed up much better. The ring is seated in more. Get some more wax. I just wanted enough just to barely seat, not too much pressure. So when it's done coming up and riding up. And we'll take it inside and uh, finish your end up. That's ah, good. Everything's seated. I don't see any leaks. I don't hear any leaks. So we need to get inside now. It's cold out here. Well, I guess I'll put that thing away.
Well, that's enough for uh, today. I got the air in it. We got uh, both ready to go on. I was going to uh, put them on uh, tonight, but it's dark outside. So I'm gonna wait until uh, around noonish tomorrow to put these on. Uh, it's just a lot nicer and easier to have the sunlight and to be a little warm. It's gotten really cold. So, Everybody can see we got the uh, Het Wrecker in here. This has been on uh, one of my projects uh, that I'm working on. Uh, when uh, we uh, was getting ready to take it out on a recovery, I decided to go through it just in case before we left to make sure everything was running. It had been out a couple times and I just figured I'd check it out. So, I uh, went and uh, started up. Everything seemed to run good, no problems. But then I went to grab the remote control that uh, operates all the hydraulics. And the light, is off, the light was off, so I changed the batteries, put new batteries in, got the light to come back on, and uh, didn't work. Tried a bunch of things, called a company, tried to do a reset to uh, sync up the receiver to, I mean the transmitter to the receiver, and this is the receiver. And you can see there was a bunch of wires here, which I have cut off, uh, because when this was all wired into this truck here, they just uh, butt connected all these up and ran tape around it. So if it stops working, I had no point to check voltages or to test anything. So I've decided to completely rewire it because it was basically a bit of a Mickey Mouse job to begin with. So my idea was this, we're going to get a new re remote control unit, but it's might gonna take a little while, maybe a week or two weeks before we can get that in. So I decided to make some hardwire switches. So there would be a local switch connection so we can operate it without the remote control. And this box was here before. Uh, I'll flip it over. It basically had a couple switches. We had this box right here. Well, now we got switches that will operate all the hydraulics. I need to make some uh, uh, labels for it. Uh, so this will be designed so you can turn on or off either the local or the remote uh, of the operation. And I decided to make it really nice. So got some special uh, 16 uh, conductor cable, routed it all up nice, made that cable go all the way underneath, back over to where this module was connected in, right back in here. And uh, then I made another terminal strip across there with all the wires. So tomorrow I should get this thing running locally. So you can just use the switch box down there. And then as soon as we get a, a new controller box, I will simply have to put connecting ends up here and simply wire it up to that terminal strip up there. So now anything that happens, I can just go up here or down at the box and test the system. So before there was no way to test the system. It was all wrapped up in uh, electrical tape. So. I'm going to get that uh, all done tomorrow, so at least this thing will be operational. But uh, we're just going to have to get new uh, remote control unit. And uh, so that's our uh, update on the Het Wrecker. And so we can get this thing uh, out and recovering. But we've got uh, Thanksgiving coming up, so uh, that's going to be pretty uh, nice to have some time off. I guess everybody can go see their family. If that's a good thing or a bad thing, depends on your family. <laughs> so let me get, uh, get over here real quick and just finish off with the tires. Well, I finished wiping off the excess uh, soap uh, because if I leave it on, it tends to collect a lot of dirt on the outside, but it is soap, it'll eventually wash off, but sometimes it'll allow stuff to stick on a little bit longer. So, 
I think that's gonna be it for this and uh, uh, it's sort of hard it's gotten super cold and the days are super short so I don't really have much time to go towards the end of the day to the uh, the fortress project so the fortress project is going to be just sort of uh, idling away during the winter time I'd like to see if I can get some uh, few days uh, and go up and uh, sort out the footings for the earth storage bunker and I've got some stuff, uh, like I said, to do with uh, the door frames and the window frames. But uh, being up there, doing much more work than that, is uh, not going to really happen until we can get some warmer weather. Uh, so, thanks everyone for watching. It's been totally awesome. Uh, I hope you... Uh, Subscribe to the channel if you liked it and hit the like button and uh, you guys have an awesome uh, Thanksgiving. God bless all of you.